Welcome back. We've cleaned our mess up from last week and now we are ready to talk about cutting fabric. Before we start cutting into our beautiful new fabric, we need to talk about measuring and layout. Most upholstered chairs take between five and seven yards of fabric and there are lots of guides online to help give you a quick idea of how much fabric you're likely to need. However, since nothing is standard in upholstery and every chair really is a little different, the best plan is to make your own cutting list. You don't need anything fancy, just a tape measure, some paper, and a pencil. But the idea is to write out everything you're planning to cut and then gather rough dimensions. I know this seems tedious, but it is a total bummer to figure out halfway through the project that you're going to run out of fabric. As I measured everything, I was able to account for a few minor style changes we're planning to make. We are going to eliminate the skirt, so we'll change the front of the chair slightly. I'm also going to modify the style of the cushions to make them a little simpler for teaching. These aren't perfect measurements, they're just enough for me to be able to create a layout. For our project, we've selected a lovely textured fabric from Greenhouse that happens to be non-directional. That will make our life a little easier, but your fabric may say railroaded or up the roll, and it's important to know what those terms mean. If your fabric is railroaded, the salvage edges are going to be your top and bottom. If your fabric is up the roll, the salvage edges are your left and right. Direction can make a big difference in the amount of fabric that you'll need. Since ours is non-directional, we laid it out both ways and decided to railroad since it will save us about a yard. If all of this information is a little overwhelming, don't worry. We'll discuss each piece in greater detail as we get to it, but for today, we just want to introduce some general guidelines. Now that we've finished our layout, we're finally ready to start cutting. Most upholstery weight fabric is 54 inches wide, so it's very helpful to have a nice big cutting surface. If you happen to have an old ping pong table, they work surprisingly well. If you don't have a big table, I'd actually recommend working on the floor. It's much easier to make sure all your lines are straight and accurate when your fabric isn't sliding away. Most of the pieces I'm cutting today are simply rectangles. A few, like the cushions, I'll cut to exact dimensions later. For now, every piece will be labeled on the bottom edge with the same abbreviations I used on our chair. Now I know what it is, and I know what direction it goes. The only place I'm not cutting a simple rectangle is the outside arm and wing. Originally, these were two separate pieces that were sewn together. I ordered plenty of fabric so we get to eliminate that step. On L-shaped pieces like this, students are often tempted to flip things around like they're cutting out Christmas cookies. I know this is a really tempting way to save fabric, but it's not a good idea. The color of a fabric can change dramatically when viewed from different angles. In order for our color to match, we need to maintain a consistent direction at the cutting table, even on a non-directional fabric like this. The only thing left to cut is fabric for our weld cord. Now all our strips need to be exactly an inch and a half wide, and you can mark them all out by hand, but I'm going to save a little time using one of my very favorite tools. It's a 60 inch CS Osborne ruler that's exactly the right width for weld cord. I picked mine up over at Fabric Supply in Minneapolis, and it always makes the job a whole lot easier. I'm also going to cut my strips on the diagonal for bias. Now this takes more fabric, but it's going to yield a much more flexible weld cord. In addition, on a tweedy fabric like this, it gives us a very satisfying difference in texture. 
and of course we'll add a sample to the project wall. Okay, you're all done cutting for now. We'll talk more about all these pieces next week when we start actually putting fabric on the frame. Hope you had fun, we'll see you then.